Good morning. God bless you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Easter Sunday worship with us here at First United Methodist Church in Hanover, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Greg, and it is my joy to celebrate the risen Christ with you today. Um, not only are we going to be standing with Mary in the empty tomb, uh, we're going to be asking ourselves some deep questions about this resurrection. How do we know that it even happened? What does it mean for us? How does it change things? We're going to get there by taking a walk through that garden and around that tomb in a way that we haven't really done before. Not only that, as is our custom on Easter morning, we're going to be sharing Holy Communion today. So I hope that you have prepared for yourself some bread and some uh, grape juice of some kind. And then uh, you can have that prepared and ready to go and share Holy Communion uh, wherever you are. So with that, we celebrate the resurrection with uh, this first song. I hope you're ready to sing. Walking the wayside, lost on a lonely road. I was chasing the high life, trying to satisfy my soul. All the lies I believed in left me crying like the rain. I saw lightning from heaven And I've never been the same I'm gonna climb a mountain I'm gonna shout about it I am a child of love I found a world of freedom I found a friend of Jesus I am a child of love
Hear the voice of love that's calling There's a chair that waits for you And a friend who understands Everything you're going through But you keep standing at a distance In the shadow of your shame There's a light of hope that's shining Won't you come and take your place And bring it all to the table There's nothing he ain't seen before For all your sin all your sorrow and your sadness there's a savior and he calls to bring it all to the table he can see the weight you carry all the fears that hold your heart But through the cross you've been forgiven You're accepted as you are And bring it all to the table There's nothing he ain't seen before For all your trials, all your worries and your burdens There's a Savior and He calls But bring it all to the table Bring it all to the table You can bring it all to the table Come on in, take your place There's no one who's turned away All you sinners, all you saints Come right in and find your grace Come on in, take your place There's no one who's turned away All you sinners, all you saints Come right in and find your grace And bring it all to the table There's nothing he ain't seen before For all your sin, all your sorrow and your sadness there's a Savior and He calls Bring it all to the table And bring it all to the table You can bring it all to the table For all your sin all your sorrow and your sadness There's a Savior and He calls Bring it all to the table Our scripture lesson uh, on this Easter Sunday morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20 Verses 1 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord our God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. 
The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. TV crime dramas like Law and Order, they start out the same way every week. Someone is innocently walking their dog down the street, minding their own business. Suddenly, the dog starts barking and sniffing around some bushes beside the sidewalk. What is it, boy? The owner asks as he peeks through the bushes to see what the dog has found. And that's when he sees the body. In horror, he humbles, uh, fumbles for his cell phone and he dials 911. And the next thing you know, the street looks completely different. The entire area is surrounded with yellow tape that reads, Crime Scene, Do Not Cross. The yellow taped area is crawling with police investigators who were trying to piece together what happened. Some of them are taking pictures. Some of them are dusting for fingerprints. Some are interviewing people in the neighborhood to see if there were any eyewitnesses who could shed some light on what happened. Because dead men tell no tales. But crime scene investigators know that every crime scene has a story to tell if you know how to read the signs. So they leave no stone unturned, no evidence uncollected, determined to get to the bottom of the mystery and close the case. Now, if our scripture reading of Mary in the Garden uh, was the opening scene of one of these crime dramas, it might unfold like this. It was early Sunday morning. Mary Magdalene was walking through the garden to the tomb. And that's when she saw it. The stone was rolled away from the mouth of the cave. And the tomb was empty. She screamed and she ran back to get help from the other disciples. And by the time Peter, John, and Mary arrived back at the tomb, the entire area had been cordoned off with yellow police tape. Investigators wearing rubber gloves dusted everywhere for fingerprints. The black mouth of the cave uh, of the empty tomb flashed with each photograph taken to document the crime scene. The lead investigator bent down to look in and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It was not lying with the rest of the linen wrappings, but it was rolled up in a place all by itself. Bag that up and take it to the lab, he ordered. I want every piece of evidence found and collected, he shouted. Every hair, every fiber, every fingerprint, every piece of linen. Let's get to the bottom of this. Just then, Mary and Peter and John arrived and they tried to cross under the yellow tape. 
when a uniformed officer stopped them. Who's that, the chief asked. Well, they say that they are friends of the dead guy. You mean the missing person, said the chief. Well, hold them there. We want to take their statement. So the chief said, what, what do you think, chief? One of the detectives asked. I don't know. I just don't know. It could be a missing persons case. Uh, maybe he faked the whole thing. I don't know. In that case, I think we should call the fraud division in to take this over. But bodies don't just get up and walk off on their own, especially not after what this guy went through. I saw it. Bodies don't just disappear either. Someone could have carried him out of here and then made up any kind of story that they want. Who knows? It could have been those three standing right there, he said, pointing to Jesus' three friends, Peter and John and Mary. We can't rule anything out as of yet. I'm going to see what these three have to say. You let me know if you find anything. The chief waved to the officer to let the three come closer. Peter and John slipped instantly under the yellow tape and they raced to the mouth of the tomb in a flash. Whoa, 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 slow down, the chief said, taking out a small notebook from his inside jacket pocket. By this time, Peter and John had slipped inside the tomb while Mary waited uneasily outside, her face still running wet with tears. Can any of you tell me what happened here? The chief asked. John answered immediately. He's risen, he's risen. Risen? What, what, what do you mean, risen? The chief asked him. I mean, he's alive. Well, you do, do you know where he is now? Well, where we can find him? I'm going to need to talk to him. The chief turned to another detective. Hey, uh, start checking the hospitals and the clinics in the greater Jerusalem area. Uh, with the wounds that he suffered on Friday, he's not going far without some help. No, said John, you, you don't understand. He has risen from the dead by the power of God. He told us that he would. We didn't understand it at the time, but he told us that he would. He turned to Peter and the two of them and they laughed. Jesus is alive, they said, and they spun each other around in a happy dance. And then Peter stopped them. He's... He's going to be looking for us, guys. We better go and tell the others. Come on, let's go. And then, like a couple of happy madmen, Peter and John raced out of the tomb to find the rest of the disciples. They hurtled over the yellow tape, and they ran back to where everyone else was. A couple of uniforms tried to grab them as they ran. Let them go, the chief said. If we need them, we know where we can find them. We can talk to them back in the city. Then he turned and he faced Mary. So what's your story, he asked. Any idea what happened here? Where is he, Mary sobbed, fresh tears running down her cheeks. I don't know, lady, the detective said. I don't know anything. We've got absolutely no eyewitnesses, no one who saw with their own eyes whether this Jesus was carried out of here by grave robbers or if he got up and walked out on his own. Usually we find some clues at the crime scene. Something. But so far there is no evidence at all to tell one way or the other. There are no fingerprints, there are no footprints, no hairs, no fibers. We got nothing. Here's my card. Call me if you think of anything I should know. And with a whistle from the chief, the investigators began to wrap up the yellow tape, and they started for home. All alone, Mary sat at the opening of the tomb, and she wept. She was startled to see two men still inside the tomb who were dressed in white. Why are you crying, they asked her because they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. And in a panic, she turned to leave the tomb, and she bumped into Jesus. Woman, why are you weeping, he asked her. Who are you looking for? Now, she thought she was talking to the gardener who took care of the cemetery grounds. 
Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, please. I won't tell the police. I won't tell the investigators. I, I just want to take care of him. I won't tell anybody that you moved the body. I just want to see him again. Please. Warmly, yet firmly, Jesus spoke her name to get her attention. Mary. And in that instance, it all came back to her. She heard Jesus' voice when he saved her from seven demons that were destroying her life. She heard his voice teaching the crowds and healing the sick and raising the dead. She remembered hearing him say, I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Blessed are you who mourn, for you shall be comforted. This was the same Jesus who said all those things. The same Jesus who had fed 5,000 people. The same Jesus who walked on water. The same Jesus who had opened the eyes of the blind. The same Jesus who had outraged the Pharisees by being seen with tax collectors like Matthew and sinners like Mary. This was the same Jesus who had raised Lazarus from the dead after four days when all hope was gone. The same Jesus who had healed her of her afflictions. He had risen from the dead just as he said he would. She didn't recognize him because the tomb was empty. I mean, that could have meant anything. She did not find the truth through the search for facts. She did not find the truth through clues or evidence or fibers or fingerprints. She found her faith in the risen Christ because she spoke he spoke her name. And she lifted her voice as an eyewitness to encourage and convince others. Of all the miracles ever performed by God on this earth among us, this is one of the few that's recorded in the Bible that has no eyewitnesses. There was no one inside that tomb to write down and describe for us exactly what happened and how it happened. The Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead left no fingerprints. There was no unit of crime scene detectives to sift the area for clues. We have no photographs, no official police reports with sworn affidavits and testimony to close the case once and for all. We just don't know. As we speak on this Easter Sunday, books and movies abound all around the world that push every other conceivable explanation for that empty tomb except the one that Mary found to be true, that he was risen. Conspiracy theories explaining how Peter and John lied and what Mary was covering up are difficult to disprove without any hard evidence. If you are seeking the truth about what happened in that tomb, we must come to the only one who was actually there, which is Jesus. You come to Jesus and he will tell you how God is turning slavery into liberation. You come to Jesus and he will tell you how God is changing darkness into light. War into peace. Suffering into joy. Despair into hope. Death into resurrection and eternal life for us and for the entire creation. Come to Jesus and he will tell you about radical compassion and new beginnings. New beginnings that start right here and right now in the way we treat one another and the world around us in holy obedience to a holy God. Because Christ is risen and among us, a new mercy and justice is offered and demanded for all who live on this earth. The past is left behind us and a hopeful future opens up waiting for us. So seek as many opinions as you care to hear. Sift as much evidence as you care to dig for. But know that true faith in God comes not from seeing, not from knowing about God, but by knowing God personally. So meet him. Come to Jesus. Hear him speak your name and live. Jesus can speak because he's alive. Test it. Ask, seek, and knock. You shall receive. You shall find. It will be opened to you. Christ is risen, my friends. He is risen indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God bless you, and happy Easter. Amen. 
on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to pray a prayer that was written first by theologian Karl Barth. Would you pray with me? Close your eyes, take a deep breath. Let the cares of the world slip away as we enter into God's presence. Let's pray. O oh Lord God, our Father, you are the light that can never be put out. And now you give us a light that shall drive away all darkness. You are love without coldness. And you have given us such warmth in our hearts that we can love all when we meet. You are the life that defies death. And you have opened for us the way that leads to eternal life. None of us is a great Christian. We are all humble and ordinary but your grace is enough for us. Arouse in us that small degree of joy and thankfulness of which we are capable, to the timid faith which we can muster, to the cautious obedience which we cannot refuse, and thus to the wholeness of life which you have prepared for all of us through the death and resurrection of your Son. Do not allow any of us to remain apathetic or indifferent to the wondrous glory of Easter. But let the light of our risen Lord reach every corner of our dull hearts. This we pray using the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As always, I want to thank you for the ways in which you are doing God's work wherever you are. Uh, as the vaccinations continue, we are praying that uh, we will begin to see the end of this COVID life, this pandemic life as we've known it. But the CDC is warning us that it looks like cases may be on the rise again, hopefully not here in Hanover. But be safe. Continue to take your precautions. And uh, I do believe we're going to be back together soon. Um, I also want to thank you for all the ways that you have decided to support the ministries of God through First United Methodist Church. Uh, if you've not given remotely to us before and you'd like to, or if it's been a while, I want to encourage you to give. Giving is part of our love relationship with God, so we want to give you an opportunity to do that. You can write a check out to First United Methodist Church of Hanover, and you can mail it into our church office, which is 200 Frederick Street, Hanover, PA, 17331. You can also call and ask to set up electronic giving. Our finance office can set you up with the proper paperwork so that your bank can make automatic uh, gifts into the church's bank. Or if you'd like to go to our church website, click on the giving tab and choose Easy Tithe, and you can make an online gift using a personal credit or debit card. Uh, in all the ways that you give, uh, you are changing lives and advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for your generosity. There are a lot of ways to celebrate the resurrection uh, through prayer, through sharing this story, which we have already done, through singing uh, the great songs of the church about resurrection and eternal life. One of the ways that has been a tradition for us is also to break the bread and share the cup of Holy Communion. Because in this communion prayer and the sharing of this cup is really a reenactment for us, our participation in everything Christ did in the surrender of his body on the cross, uh, being raised by the Holy Spirit, and the way in which that gift is transferred to us through God's grace. So uh, hopefully you have uh, prepared your elements for Holy Communion. If you forgot to get them in front of the, the screen where you are right now, feel free to just pause the video and uh, get your elements together and then restart it and we will have Holy Communion together. Friends, lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
through Jesus' suffering and death, you destroyed their power over us forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory. And you poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took simple, ordinary bread. He gave thanks to you, God the Father. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, Christ took hold of the cup. He gave thanks to you, Father, then gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this every time that you are together. Do this and drink of this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice as we remember Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit gathered on us, Lord, wherever it is that we are worshiping. We are united by your Spirit in this moment. And pour out your Holy Spirit on the bread and cup here before me and the bread and cup wherever your body of Christ is worshiping with us. Make this be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. We want to be renewed and redeemed like never before until Christ comes in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet table forever and ever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ which is broken on the cross to make us whole. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we are grateful for this holy day, the holiest of days in our year, where we celebrate the most important moment and event in human history. Yes, we know that without the cross, our sins would never be forgiven. But without the empty tomb and the resurrection of Christ, we too would return to dust. We thank you, Lord, for joining us at this table and in altar tables in every home around the world who is worshiping with us today. We thank you, Lord, that in the sharing of this bread and this cup, we have been nourished with the Holy Spirit to serve you in the week to come. All this we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.
This hope will guide me into death. Hallelujah for the cross. Hallelujah for the Lord. He fought for that one. Death has lost. Hallelujah for the souls he who maybe like us, but they roll their eyes a little bit when we talk about our faith in Jesus Christ. They, they just can't get their minds around this, and they, they think that we're pretty silly to believe something that for them is so hard to believe. I get it. I've got those friends. You've got those friends. There are, ever since this first Easter morning, there were people whose, whose minds and imaginations just couldn't go that far to believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and will live forever in resurrection. People have had all different kinds of ideas about how do you know and how do you prove it. The only proof that I've ever been able to give anybody is not what I've seen in terms of this empty tomb, but I know how Jesus has changed me and how Jesus has changed my life. You know what a difference Jesus has made and is making in your life. And you know, there's got to be something to that. It's not a coincidence that so many of us who have come to Jesus and, and, and believed in his resurrection uh, have grown and, and, and have changed in so many positive ways. It can't be a coincidence. So just as Mary recognized the risen Christ when he met her and spoke with her, the next time you're having one of those conversations, or maybe if you're watching this worship service and you're not really sure if you can believe, I'll give you the same invitation that I give everybody. And that is, if it's hard to believe with your mind, then it's time to meet him in person. And if you're not sure how to do that, talk to a friend that you trust who is a believer in Jesus Christ. Give me a call. Shoot me an email. I'll be glad to talk you through it. Because when we meet Jesus face-to-face -face and personally, things change for the better. And now, friends, as we go out into this next week, I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as we go now in peace. Happy Easter, everybody. God bless you.